So I've been trying to get these circuits interrupted. Some magical fellow on the high voltage forums had posted this, which is it's a solution for these driver chips with um, non-working enable pins. And this was my problem. I knew I had more coming, and I actually just got them in. These are um, the three two ones. It came in a little pack of five for suspiciously cheap, so I wasn't really sure if those were going to work. But I already tested them out on this driver, and um, tying the enable pins to ground, does I, like I said, I can't do anything to get the output to go low. It's just always, it's just always going to be enabled. Both inputs need to be high for the output to go low, um, otherwise it's always high. So, and I've got non-invertings, so the way that I had this here, what happens is you're basically interrupting the output by pulling the gate driver outputs high at the same time, um, you know, so they'll both be putting out 12 volts at the same time. Now, that actually did work, and I can show that, um, but I, I had troubles at first. It wasn't interrupting very clean at different voltages. Now I couldn't figure out why, and I realized it was because I lost a trace on the hex inverter. So I only had one output working, and um, it would still drive the circuit. You know, there would be less voltage on the gates, and you only got one chugging, and it would still work, but not as well. My solution, I thought, was okay. Well, I'm going to have to build a separate oscillator to constantly feed a signal in to keep it oscillating. And, um, you know, once I fixed that problem and got both of them working again, <clears throat> I, I didn't need that oscillator because it always runs now with the gating here on the NAND gates. But like I said, the only thing is, it's instead of pulling them to ground, it's pulling them high. Um, but luckily, even though these don't have working enable pins, I can just swap these out with the um, 322s and it should interrupt by pulling them to ground both of them that way so I can sort of see what the difference is there as far as interrupting but that so far is not really very impressive it seems like I get better arcs from the single MOSFET deal it's a shame it seems like the navel pin was a really good way to do it um, so I don't know <laughs> probably hit up like Mauser or DigiKey or whatever the hell try to get legit ones but I definitely would not try to buy any of these UCC 2732 drivers off of eBay or AliExpress or any of those because I've this is like the tenth one now that I've gone through both inverting and non-inverting that the enable pin is just flapping I guess the theory is these are repackaged with some type of similar driver that doesn't have an enable pin something like a TC4420 which it's probably about just as fast, but it can only drive a MOSFET up to like, I believe maybe 6 amps, something like that. I'm not sure how much of a difference that's playing um, compared to having legit drivers, um, but yeah. A little bit of it with the uh, interrupting so that the gate driver outputs are both pulled high at the same time. That was 170 there. It's really not that impressive at all. Alright, so this is just going to be about 100 volts from the ZVS at first. And that's all on.
but yeah, nothing crazy there. But I will say I really didn't notice any difference between um, interrupting by pulling the outputs of the gate drivers low as opposed to pulling them high. Uh, seems to work about the same, but I'd rather have it set up by pulling them low like this. But it does seem like if I adjust my primary a little now, um, I can get better breakout. I'm kind of wondering if that loose coupling was just working okay continuous, but to actually get better breakouts, <clears throat> I'm going to need a tighter coupling. I'm not real sure. On the Variac now, so I'm going to see what that does. That was about 170, but not too, not too great there. Little, little more output. Well, I had a. Uh, it's about 300 microfarad total and um, I don't think that was enough for these breakouts I'm trying to get it limited the uh, draw for you know running continuous smoothing it more than that continuous really pulls it down um, running it unfiltered is actually the best but I still need to crank it up high enough for that to work to uh, 680 microfarads and um, I'm pretty sure at least the arc's going to be beefier with that. Also, uh, I think with the combination of a larger top load and the smoothing caps to go with it, um, that's probably what the best breakouts will be. But I'm just going to be able to crank it up a little bit, not even all the way up, because it's too damn late, but just to see what the difference is. arc was much beefier with those bigger uh, smoothing caps and there's actually a little bit even more with that on there but it's hard to tell because I, I can uh, crank it all the way up but now I need to figure out why I was getting sort of better breakouts from the single MOSFET driver um, when I run the half bridge unfiltered and turn it all the way up the, output, the output's pretty mean and it's probably got the longest breakout but I don't want to do that. I, I want to get long um, interrupted arcs. The thing about this one was I was running it from a uh, PWM and I think the interference was causing it to not cleanly interrupt each pulse. So the end result was sort of a sort of a strange arc output that had some beef to it but was still interrupting um, sort of according to the output. And I guess it had sort of an advantage there, but it's not the best way to do it. Um, but like I say, is you know, for the single MOSFET, it wasn't the best output, but it seemed like it had the potential to be better than the half bridge. So I got to figure out what to do to this thing to get uh, longer breakouts, but <clears throat> really don't want to add bigger caps on there. <laughs> So I think I gotta just play with other variables now, but it's not bad now. I would, I'm guessing if I cut it all the way up, it'd be pretty decent.